Hey everyone, in this lesson, we are going to learn about pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. It is also known as PDH complex or PDC. So to begin with, as I have mentioned in my previous lesson on glycolysis, during aerobic glycolysis, glucose is broken down into two molecules of pyruvate. So what happens after pyruvate is being synthesized? So pyruvate is the end product of glycolysis and it must be transported into mitochondria before it can enter into TCA cycle to synthesize ATP. And this is accompanied by a specific pyruvate transporter which is called as mitochondrial pyruvate carrier and it is also known as MPC. And with the help of MPC, pyruvate then crosses the inner mitochondrial membrane to enter into mitochondrial matrix and once inside the matrix pyruvate, pyruvate is then converted into acetyl-CoA with the help of enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and this enzyme is called complex because it consists of three different enzymes and we are going to learn about that soon. So once the acetyl-CoA is synthesized it then enters into TCA cycle to synthesize ATP. Now one thing to remember that pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is not a part of TCA cycle but it helps synthesizing this acetyl-CoA which is an important substrate for TCA cycle to synthesize ATP. Now the focus of this lesson is to learn how pyruvate is converted into acetyl-CoA and what is the role of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex in this reaction. So this is the overall reaction of oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. So pyruvate is first decarboxylated into carbon dioxide and then following the oxidation reaction it is then converted into acetyl-CoA and the reaction is uh, carried out by an enzyme called pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. And these enzymes also require five different coenzymes. Those are thymine pyrophosphate, lipoic acid, flavin adenine dinucleotide that is FAD, nicotine adenine dinucleotide that is NAD plus and coenzyme. And in the process it, process, it also generates one molecule of NADH. Now before we go into the detail about this reaction, I first want to quickly talk about the enzyme itself that is pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. So like I mentioned, uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is a multi-molecular aggregate of three enzymes and five coenzymes. So here we have enzyme 1 which is called as pyruvate dehydrogenase and this is bound to coenzyme thymine pyrophosphate uh, also abbreviated as TPP and TPP derives from vitamin B1 that is thymine and enzyme E2 is uh, known as dihydrolipol transacetylase and it is covalently bound to lipoic acid and coenzyme A and this coenzyme A uh, derives from vitamin B5 pantothenic acid and E3 enzyme is dihydrolipol dehydrogenase and uh, it is bound to cofactors FAD and NAD plus and FAD derives from vitamin B2 riboflavin and NAD plus uh, derives from vitamin B3 niacin. So now that we know the enzymes and the coenzymes, now uh, let's talk about the uh, different steps of reaction of oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A. So this is the molecule of pyruvate and step one is the decarboxylation of pyruvate. So in this step, carbon one of pyruvate is released as carbon dioxide and carbon two, which is the acetyl group, is transferred onto the thiamine pyrophosphate coenzyme. And this coenzyme is bound to pyruvate dehydrogenase E1 enzyme. So step one is carried out by pyruvate dehydrogenase E1 enzyme. Now once the acetyl group is transferred onto thiamine pyrophosphate, it results in the formation of hydroxyethylthiamine pyrophosphate. So this is the first step. Now in the second step, this hydroxyethylthiamine pyrophosphate is transferred onto the oxidized form of lipoic acid. And this lipoic acid is the coenzyme for dihydroxylipoyl transacetylase E2 enzyme. So once the hydroxyethylthiamine pyrophosphate is transferred onto lipoic acid, it reduces the disulfide bond of this lipoic acid and results in the formation of acetylthioester of lipoic acid. So here you can see that there is one thioester group on this uh, lipoic acid. 
Now in the process, thiamine pyrophosphate is released and which can then be utilized for second set of oxidation reaction. Next is step 3 and which is also carried out by the enzyme dihydrolipoyl transacetylase E2 enzyme and this time this enzyme requires coenzyme coenzyme A. And in this reaction, the acetyl group from reduced lipoic acid is transferred onto coenzyme A and as a result, it synthesizes acetyl coenzyme A. And while the acetyl group is transferred onto coenzyme A, the half reduced lipoic acid is now fully reduced. Here you can see that there are two thioester group, uh, they are also called as dithiol couple of things which are important in this reaction first thing that nobody wants to keep this acetyl group acetyl group is transferred from one molecule to an uh, other molecule until uh, it eventually synthesizes acetyl CoA and second thing the coenzyme which are being used that must be recycled in order for them to be utilized for the another cycle of oxidation reaction so we saw that uh, thiamine pyrophosphate is recycled now with lipoic acid we first saw we, we started with oxidized form of lipoic acid and then it was half reduced with one thioester group and lastly it was fully reduced with diethyl now this reduced lipoic acid must be reoxidized in order for it to be used for the next cycle of reaction next is step four where the reaction is carried out by the enzyme dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase e3 enzyme and this is bound to uh, cofactor fad and in this reaction e3 enzyme promotes the transfer of two hydrogen atoms onto fad as a result fad is reduced to fadh2 uh, as well as the reduced lipoic acid is then reoxidized, and this uh, oxidized lipoic acid is now available to be utilized for the next set of oxidation reaction. Now in step 4, the hydride ion from this FADH2 is transferred onto NAD plus um, to synthesize NADH and as a result FADH2 is then uh, oxidized into F FAD. So this is the overall reaction of oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A. And one thing to remember that as I mentioned earlier, one glucose molecule is broken down into two molecules of pyruvate. That means in this overall reaction, there are basically two NADH molecules are generated and two acetyl CoA molecules are synthesized. And once the acetyl CoA is synthesized, it then enters into TCA cycle to synthesize ATP. Now let's quickly review this reaction in a different schematic format. So here we have pyruvate molecule and first step is the decarboxylation of pyruvate where carbon 1 of pyruvate is released as carbon dioxide and carbon 2 which is the acetyl group is transferred onto thiamine pyrophosphate with the help of enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase E1 to synthesize hydroxyethylthiamine pyrophosphate. Subsequently, hydroxyethylthiamine pyrophosphate is transferred onto oxidized form of lipoic acid, which is the coenzyme for E2 enzyme. And as a result, lipoic acid is reduced half uh, with the acetyl group attached to it. And this also releases the thiamine pyrophosphate, which can be used for another cycle of uh, reaction. Now the acetyl group, which is attached to uh, reduced lipoic acid, is then transferred onto coenzyme A to synthesize acetyl coenzyme A. And as a result, the half reduced lipoic acid is now fully reduced with two thioester group. And subsequently, E3 enzyme, which is attached to cofactor FAD, this promotes the transfer of two hydrogen atoms on FAD which results in the re reduction of FAD to FADH2 and this also reoxidizes the lipoic acid which can then be used for another cycle of reaction. And furthermore, lastly, the hydride ion from FADH2 is transferred onto NAD plus to synthesize NADH and as a result FADH2 is then oxidized to FAD. So this is the overview of oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A. And this is a different schematic and to be honest this is the kind of schematic you will find in most of the textbook and I find it very confusing that's why I thought I will actually present the reaction in five different steps. So when you refer the textbook it will be easy for you to understand the 
uh, reactions. So overall, we learned that uh, oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate uh, synthesizes acetyl coenzyme A and carbon dioxide. It also generates uh, NADH and the reaction is carried out by pyruvate dehydrogenase complex that is E1, E2, E3, three different enzymes which also along with their five different coenzymes. Now next thing I want to talk about is the regulation of pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme. So in certain condition when there is too much of pyruvate is being converted into acetyl CoA, first thing during, during the reaction NADH is generated and secondly the acetyl CoA which was synthesized that can enter into TCA cycle to synthesize ATP. So if too much of pyruvate is being converted into acetyl CoA, it increases the level of ATP, acetyl CoA and NADH in cells. And remember that increase in ATP is an indicator of energy rich status of cells. An increase in cellular level of ATP, acetyl CoA and NADH can activate an enzyme which is called pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase also abbreviated as PDK. And since this is a kinase, the role of kinases are to add phosphate group uh, on protein or enzymes or phosphorylate the enzyme. So pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase enzyme inhibit pyruvate dehydrogen enzyme by phosphorylating pyruvate dehydrogenase. That means when pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme is phosphorylated, it is considered to be inactive and therefore the, the reaction of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA is inhibited, resulting in the reduction of generation of NADH, acetyl-CoA and ATP in cells. Now, in second condition, where if this reaction is inhibited, this can result in the accumulation of pyruvate in cells. So increase in pyruvate level is first. Secondly, if uh, there is an increase in ADP level in cells, and remember that increase in cellular ADP level is an indicator of energy deficient cell. As well as if there is an increase in coenzyme A in NAD plus in cells, and we just learned that coenzyme A and NAD plus is, an, is important for oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A. So overall, increase in pyruvate, ADP, coenzyme A and NAD plus level in cells can inhibit the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase. And since the PDK enzyme is inactivated, it is no longer able to phosphorylate pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme. As a result, the reaction is considered to be activated where pyruvate is converted into, into acetyl-CoA and acetyl-CoA then enters into TCA cycle to synthesize ATP. So now the cells which were deficient in now energy now they are being provided with energy in the form of ATP. Now third scenario which is a little bit different than these two situations where increase in calcium level can also regulate pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme. So increase in calcium level in cells can activate an enzyme which is called pyruvate dehydrogenase phosphatase. And remember that phosphatase enzymes are different than kinases. Kinases add phosphate group whereas phosphatase enzymes remove phosphate group from the enzyme. So pyruvate dehydrogenase phosphatase enzyme activate pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme by removing the phosphate group from pyruvate dehydrogenase. And remember that when pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme is not phosphorylated, it is considered to be active and therefore the reaction of uh, pyruvate to acetyl-CoA is also activated. Now the calcium is, why does calcium activate this reaction? And there is a very important reason behind that. We know that when skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle cells contract, it releases calcium in cells and most importantly, uh, cardiac muscle cells because cardiac muscle cells constantly contract and because it constantly contracts, it requires energy and this energy is provided in the form of ATP. So when this skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle cells contract, they release calcium in cells. So the role of calcium here is to provide the cells with energy in the form of ATP and make sure that these cells function without any interruption. So this is the overview of regulation of pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme. And now I just want to quickly talk about the clinical relevance of this enzyme. And the first condition is called pyruvate dehydrogenase deficiency. And this is the most common biochemical cause of congenital lactic acidosis. 
and because the enzyme is deficient it is unable to convert pyruvate into acetyl CoA and as a result pyruvate is then shunted into the formation of lactic acid in the brain. Now this is particularly in brain because brain heavily relies on glucose to synthesize energy and we know that glucose is broken down into two molecules of pyruvate and then pyruvate is converted into acetyl CoA. However, if the enzyme is deficient, it is not able to convert pyruvate to acetyl CoA. In fact, it is converted into lactic acid in the brain and as a result it causes acidosis in the brain and brain is very sensitive to acidosis and that can lead to neurodegeneration muscle spasticity and in the neonatal onset form it can cause early death now there is not many treatment options for pyruvate dehydrogenase deficiency the only thing they can do is provide this uh, these patients with supplementation of uh, thiamine pyrophosphate which is the coenzyme for pyruvate dehydrogenase e1 enzyme the other option is to provide these patients with uh, dietary restriction of carbohydrates specifically ketogenic diet because this does not contain any carbohydrate and this will minimize the formation of pyruvate as well as also minimize the genera uh, synthesis of acetyl CoA and that way it can actually bypass the requirement of pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme. So this is the one condition. Now second condition is arsenic poisoning and in this condition arsenite which is the trivalent form of arsenic. This arsenite forms a stable irreversible complex with thiol or a thioester group of lipoic acid. As a result it is it makes lipoic acid unavailable to serve as a coenzyme for e2 enzyme and this will result in the accumulation of pyruvate in the cell specifically in the brain and this can affect brain it can cause neurologic disturbances and death and one thing to remember that arsenic is a slow poison because it takes time for it to affect enough enzymes to become lethal it builds up in the body and it can be also detected in the hair. So these are the two uh, different clinical conditions I thought that was relevant to our lesson today. So I really hope that you learned something new from this video and if you do so please like and share the video and subscribe the channel and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.